blink and you just might miss them. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 details in Grey's Anatomy you never noticed. For this list, we're taking a look at subtle and interesting details from this hit medical drama. We'll be talking about major plot points from the show, so this is your spoiler alert. This is forever. Number 10. Secret Pregnancy Just because an actress is pregnant doesn't mean her character has to be, so hiding pregnancies is a common practice in the television industry. Well, at least you don't have to be laid up in bed for the next month. There have been some clever tactics used over the years, like strategically placed props or CGI. Even though Grey's used some of these tactics, they took things to another level to cover Ellen Pompeo's pregnancy in a particular episode. Am I stupid for doing this? No. Really? You get to save your dad's life tonight. They created an entire story where Meredith donated her liver to her father, which meant Pompeo could lie in a hospital bed and wear a hospital gown, in addition to giving both the actress and Meredith a good reason to be absent for a while. Good, good, that's good. Number 9. Doppelgangers This detail has us seeing double three times. For the monumental 300th episode, the show decided to give us some nostalgia with doppelgangers of some of our favorite characters. You were right. Okay, you're always right. Now you're just stating the obvious. I think I'm hallucinating. You'll find a George lookalike wearing his signature brown jacket, a Christina lookalike wearing a leather jacket, and Izzy wearing a pink sweater. Seriously, you're gonna blame me for this. All three are doctors who take us on a roller coaster ride of emotion and nostalgia. Executive producer Krista Vernoff revealed that actress Erin Ray inspired the doppelganger story, since she looked so much like Katherine Heigl, and we definitely agree. We are second years. Try to keep up. I see another one of me, I'm leaving. <laughs> Number 8. Return of the Post-it Notes To everyone else, a post-it note may seem like an ordinary piece of paper, but to a Grey's Anatomy fan, it's a legally binding contract. To love each other. Even when we hate each other. Derek and Meredith's first wedding vows were written on a blue post-it, and the show actually foreshadows the moment earlier in the episode. Before the couple gets to their vows, Christina gives Meredith a pen, blue post-its, and an old grocery list for the traditional something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue bridal rhyme. Borrowed, and all of it's blue, so you're covered. That very pen and blue post-its were later used in this episode for Meredith's iconic post-it wedding, so we can thank Christina for saving that impromptu moment. See that? Plenty of time. Number 7. Magic Exists do you believe in magic? Well, if you're a fan of Grey's Anatomy, there's a good chance you do. If you look at the first letters of the original interns, Meredith, Alex, George, Izzy, and Christina, what do you get? M-A-G-I-C. In the Easter egg-filled 300th episode, Meredith may directly be referencing the acronym during her voiceover when she says, We are forced to acknowledge that certain kinds of magic exist. It may sound like a stretch, but it's the episode with doppelgangers. And she not only says this right after imagining her late mother, but also right before she gets a call from the real Christina. Yes, yes. What'd she say? Yes, she asked me if I feel different. Damn straight she does. Number six, tribute to Derek. Most of us will never really accept the death of Derek Shepard, but at least the show includes little details to keep his memory alive. I have a thing for fairy boats. For those who don't know, Derek had a thing for fairy boats, so naturally he has a scrub cap decorated with his favorite ships. It was his signature cap, so when he passed away, Meredith took up the mantle and began wearing the cap in her own surgeries. She's even wearing it when she finds out that she's won the Harper Avery Award, so it must be lucky. Congrats, Meredith. <laughs> Number 5. The Rhymes Cafe This detail is very subtle and quick. Blink and you've missed it. While Richard Weber is in a cafe leisurely reading his paper, he sees police cars going towards the hospital, so he pays and runs off. You can't pay with that. If you look at the waitress in that short scene, her shirt says The Rhymes Cafe, which is a reference to Shonda Rhimes. Rhimes is the creator of Grey's Anatomy and wrote the episode, so it's only natural that she'd want to slip her name into her own creation, even if it's only for a split second. Number 4. Episode Names Something the show does really well is its music choices. They always manage to pick the perfect song to fit the mood, and you can't forget their entire musical episode. Something you might not have noticed is that almost every episode of the series is actually titled after a song. Hey, just get over yourself. This ain't too good for your health. Hey, just get over yourself. The 
aforementioned musical episode, for example, is titled Song Beneath the Song, which is genius as it's basically like songception. The episode where Derek dies is titled How to Save a Life, which is the title of a song by The Fray. There have been over 350 episodes now, so the dedication to relevant song titles is impressive. Number 3. Amelia's Presidential Remark Sometimes politics have a way of slipping themselves into a show. In this case, Amelia Shepard gave a subtle diss to President Trump. Even after going through a traumatic surgery to remove a brain tumor, and even though she feels like a new person, there's one thing that remains the same for Amelia. That's her dislike of the president. She's going through routine questions for discharge following brain surgery when she's asked by her doctor if she knows the current president. Without missing a beat, she responds that she wishes she didn't. Like we said, subtle but to the point. Do you know who the president is? I wish I didn't. Number two, nurses are more like background players. Where are the nurses at? We know they're physically there and sometimes they even sneak into a romance every once in a while, but they never seem to be doing regular nurse duties. Nervous handlers? I'm sorry, I should be better at this. But I still get a little squeamish around leeches. Instead, the doctors do everything and the nurses take a back seat, often just observing the doctors and following whatever menial task the doctors give them. Unhappy nurses lead to... I don't even want to think about it. If you've ever been hospitalized, you'll know that nurses are extremely hands-on with their patients and can even handle a medical procedure or two. One of the exceptions on the show is surgical nurse Boki, though, who happens to be a scrub nurse in real life. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Foreshadowing What Happens to Derek Most of us felt pretty blindsided by the death of Derek Shepard. He was a major character, Meredith's soulmate, and R. McDreamy. We didn't think they could kill him, but his death may have been foreshadowed as early as the first season. That's when Derek says that if he was ever in a coma, he'd want his sisters there. You know, I have four sisters. Very girly, tons of kids. If I was in a coma, they'd all be here. I'd want him here. And wouldn't you know it, he was in a coma before he was taken off life support. Then in season 5, Meredith has vivid nightmares of Derek dying in an accident, which is how he ends up dying several seasons later. Are these merely coincidences, or was Derek doomed from the beginning? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.